Hello all, this is Prof C coming to you from the beautiful UNLV campus. Wonderful place here in Las Vegas, University of Nevada. Go Rebels! Now, I wanted to make a quick video, mainly for college students, but also for my fellow colleagues about generative AI and its use in classwork this fall. This campus is mainly dead, so is my campus, but in one or two weeks, it's going to change radically as all the students and faculty come back. Now, I'm going to not going to rehash what happened in the spring and in the winter when uh, the faculty kind of went into shock when they learned what ChatGPT and generative AIs could do. Uh, and what they might be capable of as far as doing assignments. Nor will I rehash the joy that students felt when they uh, learned about ChatGPT and saw a brilliant tool to deal with many of the bullshit assignments that they receive, or a reason that professors might be forced to eliminate those assignments altogether. But I will say that during the summer break, universities, departments, and many faculty have created guidelines that they think will define how these new tools can be used in a classroom. Well, let's look at a few of these. Let's look first at the policy that has been implemented at UNLV. I'll link to the full description uh, below, but here are some important points. They say, instructors, should they choose, may integrate generative AI thoughtfully into their teaching practices, assessments, and class discussions to foster an environment that promotes ethical and responsible use of this technology and familiarize with its opportunities and challenges. Okay, or, I'm sorry, familiarization with its opportunities and challenges. So very, very good description there of the direction we want to be headed. They also go on to say, when incorporating AI technologies into courses, instructors are encouraged to provide clear guidance to students on the proper application and limitations of these tools. Okay, so once again, the instructors need to be responsible for this. It's not something where there's just a cut and dried line, and we'll talk about why in just a second. Okay. Improper use of generative AI is a form of academic dishonesty as outlined by the university student academic misconduct, misconduct policy. So I really like this policy because it understands that instructors and students have to have some sort of dialogue about generative AI. Now let's look at highlights from another institution which has added the following to their official policies for the university. Again, I'm going to link to the full policy below. But this one is very different. They say academic dishonesty, including but not limited to cheating, plagiarism, unauthorized use of artificially generated content, or sabotage. That is what defines academic dishonesty. The term unauthorized use of artificially generated content includes but is not limited to the use of artificial intelligence tools or other tools that generate artificial content and taking quizzes, tests, examinations, or other assessments without permission from the instructor. Okay, so this makes sense. You can't do that stuff unless your instructor gives you explicit permission. That's the way most of this reads in this academic dishonesty. Um, so here's the part I don't like. Use of commonly available tools such as spelling or grammar checking software or features of software that propose anticipated words or phrases while text is being written will not be considered unauthorized use of artificially generated content unless such use is contrary to instructions from the instructor. Now the problem with these guidelines is that AI is getting added to everything. Businesses want AI to be built into their office applications because it turns out that generative AI is a very powerful tool to increase the productivity of their staff. A study by MIT this spring shows that generative AI levels the playing field between employees who are poor writers and employees who are good writers, essentially narrowing the bell-shaped curve of productivity in a positive direction for lots of organizations. I'll link to that study below. So AI is getting baked into all sorts of 
office applications, where does your professor institution really draw the line in terms of academic dishonesty? If spelling and grammar tools are okay, then what, and I seem to suggest that sentence completion is okay, it's common in very many applications, um, what about Lex.Page, which has been around for at least six or eight months, that completes your paragraphs for you? Or Microsoft's Copilot, which seeks to do the same thing. And if you are a faculty member and you think, no problem, turn it in, or one of these AI, other AI detection tools are going to let me know which parts were generated by an AI and which by a student, mm, you are out of luck. Because it turns out that one of the things we've learned in the last six months is that most of these AI detection tools do not work very well at all. Okay, I'll link to some recent news and studies below as well. I'm sure that some of you saw the disastrous results at Texas A&M where the university didn't have a solid AI policy and a professor used one of these detection tools to inappropriately decide that his entire class had used them and failed them all. Okay, so you want to keep yourself out of the headlines both as a student and a faculty member. So I have four tips for faculty and four tips for students that are returning back to campuses about the use of AI in the classroom. But before I go on to those, uh, I would just make a quick ask and uh, ask you to please subscribe and like this video, leave your comments and questions below. I do read every comment, try to respond to everyone, and I will be doing some AMAs soon based on questions I've gotten from you all. So onwards, students first, check the syllabus. And if there's any, and I mean any gray areas, ask your professor. I know my colleagues that teach large sections will want to kill me for saying this, but it's important to have that conversation. Now, when you do use, number two, when you do use a generative AI like ChatGPT, never ask it something that you don't already know the answer to because it will make stuff up. It's getting better, but it'll still make stuff up. Now, I should say not all versions are getting better. ChatGPT actually appears to be getting worse. Also, third thing, consider documenting your writing process and using uh, something like Google Docs, which will actually show through time how you progressed in doing your writing. Okay? Unfortunately, some faculty are accusing students of using generative AI that are not using generative AI. And certainly students, you should be learning about these new tools, whether your faculty is teaching them or not. Now faculty, first, do not use AI detection tools, period. If you are concerned about students using these tools, consider requiring students to submit in stages or using tools such as Google Docs where progress can be showed by the student, where you can actually observe their writing process. Also consider redoing your assignments so that they are not something that's so formulaic. Be very clear with your students. Use examples when you define what can and cannot be done with AI. Also, you should be learning about AI all the time. Unfortunately, I realize that we're all very busy faculty, but um, you know, we got to learn about this technology. Our students are going to be using it once they graduate. Our fields are using it. Our, our fellow researchers are using it. Uh, make sure to allocate some time to learn about AI yourself. And fourth, don't use an AI to write something in which having an AI write it would be considered crude or crass. Don't write a note to a student that's lost a family member using an AI. Don't write um, something that is regarding something that's high stakes uh, using an AI. Something where you should be held responsible for those words, that you should be the originator of those words. I'm going to put together a, another video on when is it uh, immoral to use chat GPT and I think those types of things where we're trying to make that human connection you should just simply not use chat GPT. It's better to have poor words of sympathy than great words and have some computer make it. So thank you for watching um, and uh, I'll see you real soon.